Hi, welcome back to Mr. Stewart's lessons. What we're going to do today is learn how to add text to a game, both uh, game over, uh, simple game over text, and then a dynamic score counter. Let's start with the game over text. I'm working on uh, fruit, the Fruit Wars lesson, which is something I've made before. Um, and if you've been following along, you have it too. But if you haven't, that's okay. You can go to MrStewart'sLessons.com and download the game at the up to now at the bottom of this lesson, lesson 13. So, if you need to, go to MrStewart'sLessons.com and download the game, and then you can work with it. So if you've done that now, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to make a game over screen. Now what's happening right now, if I run this, um, I have a game where I can move my ship around. Oh, and if I get hit by a banana, I die. I just disappear. But that's not that interesting. What I'd really like to do is I'd like to make it so that I get a game over screen. It looks like I've actually ended a game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an actor. Uh, and I'm going to create a new subclass of actor and this subclass is going to be called game over but I'm not going to select an image in this case I'm going to leave it without an image so I want you to do that go to the uh, actors uh, select new subclass and create a game over but with no image now you see game over it's sitting here it hasn't got an image that's okay because we're going to dynamically create one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the game over actor uh, code window and uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to delete the act method this doesn't need an act method because it's not going to do anything it's just going to sit there it's going to sit there and say game over that's all it does so I'm going to delete the act method altogether and now this is all we have uh, so I want you to pause the game and delete the act method yourself. Now I'm going to create a new method. Uh, it's going to be uh, just a setup method. It's, I'm going to say public I'm going to say public game over and I'm going to put parentheses around it and I'm going to put open and close curly brackets. We don't need to say void because uh, this is uh, something, this is a setup method that comes automatically when the thing gets uh, instantiated and so it doesn't need to return anything and it doesn't need to know if it's returning anything. So uh, I want you to do that now. Create the public game over method. Okay, and now what we're going to do, you notice we don't have an image, so we need to create an image. So I'm going to hit control space. One of my choices in here is a set image. And it doesn't actually matter which one of these I select, they're both basically the same. So I want you to create a uh, uh, right set image or get it from your uh, control space method. Now, in here, this is the image we're going to create, and the image is going to be some text in this case. Now, the way we're going to do it is I'm going to write new greenfoot image, and uh, I'll do open and close parentheses so I don't forget to close the parentheses. So I want you to do that right now. Inside the parentheses, type new greenfoot image, and there's various options with the green foot image. The one we're going to use is uh, the string. Um, and so the string is going to say game over. That's the text it's going to say. But there's some other stuff we need to put in to make it work. One of the things we're going to need to put in is how big the text is going to be. So I'm going to write 48. That's 48 pixels high. You can decide later on how big you want your text to be. But 48 is a pretty good size. And then I'm going to say what color it needs to be. Um, so my background is black and my foreground and my uh, I, I want my foreground color to be white. So the first thing is I'm going to um, write the foreground color. So I'm going to write color and then in caps I write white. Color period white and the white has to be in capitals. 
And then I'm gonna write the background. So it'll be color. And make sure also when you do this that your uh, color uh, is capitalized, just like that. So fill in the arguments in the new green foot image, the text, how big it is, what color the foreground is, and what color the foreground text is, and what color the background is. Now, it's not going to work quite yet. If I compile it, I'm going to get an error. It's going to say can't find variable color. And that's because I need to import something. I need to import another uh, thing from the uh, Java that has some colors that it already knows, so it'll recognize what black and white is. So I'm going to go up here under import greenfoot.star, and I'm going to write import java.awt.color. And uh, this, all this is going to do is it's going to make it, this, this just gets it so it knows what the color.white and color.black mean. That's all it really is. And now if I compile it, you'll see there's no errors and it's fine. I can close this up. Now if I add this, you'll see it'll, I'll, you'll see there's game over, right? But that's not good enough yet because we need it to appear when we actually die. That's what we need to happen. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the pie ship and we need to we go to the place that makes the pie ship die. So I'm going to open up the pie ships code. Um, and there's various methods here, but um, the one that matters is the one that says public void hit banana. Hit banana is uh, what makes me die when I hit the banana. Just to recap what happens, actor banana equals get one intersecting object bananas dot class. This looks for a banana that's touching me. If no banana is touching me, then it will be then banana will be null because there's nothing. This banana exclamation point equals null. This means that the banana is not null, which means there actually is a banana touching me, which means I'm going to die. Then what I do is I go into, I access my world using world, my world equals get world. This gets the world that I'm in, which is the space that I'm in. And then I go to, um, I need to remove the world, I mean, remove the pie ship from the world. And so this my world dot remove object, this means remove me from the game. And that makes me die. Now, I need to add something in. What I need to do is add the game over actor to the world to show that I've died. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create the game of act over actor. So I'll say uh, game over game over game over equals new That seems a little bit redundant. You've seen this happen before when we um, create new objects like the like the bananas or other things in the game. So, just to recap, what this means: game over. This is uh, a type of variable. A type of variable is the actual game over object. Game over is the name of the variable, and new game over actually creates a new game over actor to place in the game. What I want to do now is I want to uh, actually add it to the game. And you obviously we're using remove object to get the ship out of the world. So we're going to use the add object method of the world to add it. So I'll type my world period and then I'll do control space and you'll see there's an add object. Okay. And the object is the game over. I'm doing it in lower case because what we're doing is actually adding the variable game over which contains the object. Now the X and Y is where I want to add it. And what I'd really like it to be is right in the middle of the screen. Uh, and in this case I have about a 600 by 400 screen and so I could just make X 300 and Y 200 and that would work fine. But what if I want to change the size of my screen? I'd like it to always be in the middle of the screen. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say 
myworld dot and then I'm going to use the get with method and I'm going to divide it by two this gives me this finds how wide my world is and divides it by two which gets me which makes me uh, halfway across the screen you can probably guess what I'm doing with the Y it's going to be the same thing my world dot get height divided by two and then I'll add a semicolon here so this is going to uh, create a new game over actor here in this line it's going to go into my world it's going to call the add object method which adds it something in then it's going to call the game over get the game over variable and put it in there it's going to put it halfway across the width of the screen and halfway across the height of the screen so if you haven't done it yet I'd like you to pause it and add this code into your hit banana method and you can compile it and see if it'll work and let's try it again let's compile the whole game and I'm gonna run it if you hit F F by the way hits actually creates shoots a banana shoots a, a cherry but now I'm gonna die to see if my ship works and there it is that's my game over screen if you come back for the next lesson I'm gonna show you how to make an even more interesting dynamic text counter that tells you how to make a something that keeps track of your score see you next lesson